Hey everybody, time to get started with 7 minutes in the morning this morning. Today we're going to talk about when your plan is just a plan. Stay tuned. everybody, good morning. Welcome to this installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning. My name is Tom Rigsby, your host. And uh, all this week we've been talking about that ugly word, process. I, it's so ugly I haven't changed it to middle of the week to uh, your checklist or your script for the day. Whatever you want to call it. Having a process, the value of having a process. Um, I've got some... I guess I won't call these final thoughts because we have Free Coaching Friday coming up tomorrow, but kind of the, of the structured thoughts that I've got, I'm going to wrap things up today um, with one final encouragement about your process. Before I get to that, though, if you're here watching live or watching on the replay, I would love it if you'd leave a comment down there. Let me know who's here. Good morning, Ramona. Awesome pictures of the grandchild. Those are uh, those are fantastic. Thanks for sharing those. Congratulations on that. That's super exciting. We have one. Uh, we have two. Our youngest one is just about to turn a year old. Um, so we'll get to go see her in a couple of weeks. And actually, actually, before that, she's coming to stay with us. So yay us. <laughs> um, <coughs> whew, excuse me. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Keith. A very wet day in York, but it'll be a great day today. That's the way to look at it. You know, rain's just an opportunity to make the grass grow. I, and I like cutting the grass, so. Hey, so thank you guys for joining. And listen, if our conversation this week has been beneficial to you, if it's something that has given you something to think about, even if you don't know somebody immediately, someone that's not somebody that immediately comes to mind, go ahead and share this video or any of the videos this week with your network. Uh, somebody there is going to pick up on that. And the great thing about it is they give you the value for connecting us. That's just kind of awesome how that works. Uh, Brooke, good morning. Good to see you here this morning also. All right. So all week we've been talking about process and how... Um, not having a process kind of leads to just ad hoc, uh, ad lib living. Kind of the, the saying I've got taped up to the wall here, you know, stop letting life happen to you and start creating the life you crave. Without a process, you're just letting life happen to you. And this probably, look, the process process <laughs> can work for anything. It can be how to start a project, how to finish a project, how to begin your morning, how to end your day, all how to start the car, how to park the car. Anything can have a process associated with it. And the reason that those become valuable is two things that make them valuable. One is because we just kind of don't have to think about it, right? I mean, how many times, and, and this, this is a great example applies to almost everybody. When you first learned how to drive, uh, I mean, you are super tuned into what you're doing. Now, if you're really honest, I bet everybody has the opportunity to admit that they've made at least one trip in the car where they don't really remember the journey from point A to point B because they had something else on their mind. I do it. In fact, Vicky gives me a hard time because if we happen to pass on the highway or something, she'll wave and blow a horn and I'm just like, off somewhere else. So we become, and that's kind of a dangerous thing, but we, we become, the point is we become conditioned to the process so we don't have to give it active thought. We can allow our mind to work on other things. In your business, in your life, that frees up that creative part of your brain because that's the same part of your brain that tries to hold on to figuring out what to do next. It frees up the creative part of your brain to come up with new and exciting things. The second thing that having a process does is it reduces, maybe even eliminates all your anxiety. Anxiety comes from unknown outcomes, right? Anxiety really is worrying about worry. And what do we worry about? The outcome of an, of an effort. If we know what the outcome is going to be, then we don't have to worry about it. That reduces anxiety. 
So you can be have less anxiety, have more predictable outcomes, uh, and free up some creative bandwidth in your brain. All those are great things. All right. But here's what I want to want you to take away today. You can also call a process a plan. All right. So a a generic we'll call it a template because most of us are familiar with templates. If I go into Word or Excel and I use a template that that pre-populates a lot of stuff for me, that's kind of like the process. But then I go in and fill in the details, and now that becomes my plan. Okay? That's kind of the difference between a process and a plan. Plans are made to be changed. I want you to think about that for just a minute. Even if you don't agree with that, it still happens. Right? I had a boss one time. Very difficult person to work for, but I learned a lot from him. And he told us this story of um, one of the managers on his team at a previous business who had come up with a quarterly plan. Here's what we're going to do in terms of revenue and expense, and you know, here's what it's going to look like. Well, the manager wasn't going to make plan that quarter, and so he booked a ticket and flew into town in order to resign. And this, this guy telling the story, my, my boss at the time said, why would you quit? It's just a plan. We didn't cast it in bronze or carve it into stone. It's just a plan. If you're not going to make plan, just let me know, and we'll come up with a new plan. All right? So your process, I wish I had it over here, but it's not not within arm's reach today. Even my book, my composition book that I've been going through uh, with you this week, working on my morning and evening processes, I've got little lines and squiggles and arrows where I'm making adjustments to it. So here's what I want you. Here's how I want you to think about the process. It's, I mean, it's just a process. It's just a plan, right? If it doesn't work, change it, right? What was that movie? History of the World, I think. Mel Brooks, long, long, long time ago. But it's got a great line in it. It's good to be king, right? When you're the king, you can change things. And you are the king or the queen or the ruler of your business and your life. Stop letting life happen to you. Start creating the life you crave. That begins by understanding what... uh what life it is you want to create, and then putting the processes and systems in place to make that a reality. I was reading yesterday, um, oh man, Scott Adams, I almost forgot his name, the guy that did the Dilbert cartoons. He had a great quote, and, um, and I'll expand on this some more later, so don't take this the wrong way. Losers have goals, winners have systems. The difference is, Goals are short-term thinking. Systems are long-term thinking. Processes, you put together a couple of processes and all of a sudden you got a system. And his, but his kind of theory around that is, I want to build a system so that even if I fail, I still reach my goal. Or, or I still reach the outcome that I'm trying to, to create. I still get the life that I crave, even if I stumble on some of the steps along the way. All of that begins by having processes script as much of what you do as possible. That allows you to leverage other people's time, talent, and resources and frees up that creative space in your brain. All right, Joe's got a comment here. Let's see what he says. Process reproduction is the equivalent of practicing a skill which, which increases efficiency. That, you know, that's exactly right. And in fact, it, it reminds me of a, a process, you know, a do loop, right, where you do it. You test the results, you refine it, and do it again. And you just stay in this loop until you get, you know, a well-formed process. And you'll know when you get it because it won't be painful. I mean, it's actually achieving the outcome that you want, and it's not a burden to execute. That's how you know when it's working. And that reproduction as Joe says, is what increases efficiency. You will be able to see when you exercise it, when you test it and do it, you'll see those 80%. All right, remember yesterday we talked about the 80-20 rule. 80% of your results come from 20% of your effort. That means 80% of your effort is not contributing toward the result. 
So we want to find those things and remove them. You only find them by exercising the process. All right. Joe also said, same as Bob Newhart's advice, find the cause of the problem, then stop it. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Oh, that's that, that was funny enough. It made me snort. It, yeah, just stop it. If it hurts when you stick your finger in your eye, stop sticking your finger in your eye. All right. I hope that's been helpful today. Uh, if you have questions or comments about process systems, any of that, we're going to continue to explore some of the, the aspects of that over the coming weeks. But leave me a question, leave a comment down below, leave me a question, a message uh, on the Unashamed Nonconformist page on Facebook, or you can send me an email, tom at tomrigsby.com. I'm going to pick one of those questions or comments from this week and unpack that a little bit more on Free Coaching Friday tomorrow. Be sure to tune in for that at 7 a.m. right here on Facebook for seven minutes in the morning. All right, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. You guys have a fantastic, oh, let's see, that's Friday, so Thursday. Thursday is thankful Thursday. What are you thankful for today? I'd love to see that down in the comments also. Today, I said, as I was doing writing in my journal, and I'm thankful, thankful for all the hard work that went in to, to uh, creating an outstanding co-working night event last night down at Huntsville West. The, uh, there was a lot of new going on there. Uh, co-working night is an event that's run by the folks at New Leaf Digital, which now is called Urban Engine. That was an announcement recently made. They've changed their name. And they changed their location for co-working night. Now instead of Real Estate Row, it's over at Huntsville West. And we packed the joint last night. It was probably... 300 people or so there. Great group. And in the Idea Suck group, the uh, workshop that I do on Thursday or Wednesday nights, I have 30, 35 people in there. Fantastic group. So put that on your schedule if you're in the Huntsville area. Come by on Wednesday nights. We do that at 7 p.m. So I do this at 7 a.m. and that at 7 p.m. Um, but the Idea Suck workshop, we talk about these kinds of things in there. We've got a very lively group there. So I'm thankful for them. Leave me a comment what you're thankful for. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up since we're over seven minutes. You guys have a great day. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.